Hello everyone, I do apologise for any poor sound quality in this video, it is very hot here in the UK at the moment and I have my fan on and the door open, um, so it's probably going to be a lot of ambient noise. So this is a video on how to take apart and get to the hard disk on an HP Pavilion notebook model uh, 15 AB291SA otherwise known as product ID P5P73EA and then in the UK it's got a hash or a pound sign ABU. So first thing you saw there, remove the battery. Then the second thing I'm going to do is remove the CD drive, which is this screw here, and it has a little disc symbol next to it. Once you've undone that, you should just be able to slide the uh, DVD drive out. While we're here, there are two tiny screws, silver screws there, that you'll need a very small, almost kind of jeweler's screwdriver for. And there we go. There's one. And there's another. Now we need to undo every single screw around the edge of this machine and uh, this one in the middle and there's almost certainly going to be ones underneath uh, these sticky pads. So I'm a big fan of um, putting the screws in the layout in which you took them out of the computer. Uh, in case any of them are slightly different lengths, you know where they went. So if I haven't cropped it out of the video, you'll see over to my left, as I undo these screws, they're going uh, upside down so they don't roll around uh, in the layout in which they came out of the machine. So these ones here are definitely much longer. Okay, I think that's all of and there's a screw there. I think that's all of those. Now let's uh, look for screws underneath these. There's definitely one screw there. There's almost certainly going to be a screw under this one as well. There is. Okay, I don't think there's going to be screws under this uh, rubber panel. Sometimes HP do that, but I don't think they have on this uh, model. I'm going to proceed with that. Uh, and if I'm wrong, I will insert a little bit of video right now showing you what you need to do if so. Um, next thing is this, this uh, back black plastic feet need to come off.
So all I did there is very gently pried them up with a spudger or a uh, very flexible thin knife. If anyone's interested, this is an RGM 103, which I bought on eBay, uh, uh, Amazon, as recommended years ago by Lewis Rossman of the Apple Mac repair fame. So undo the screw which was underneath, uh, undo the screws which were underneath both of these black um, feet coverings. And I think we're now ready to pop the underside off this laptop, or possibly, depending on uh, how it's made, pop the top palm rest off of the laptop. I'm going to go with the palm rest option for this one. So, <clears throat> keeping an eye on the hinge area, I'm going to try and open that up again. Yeah, okay, for this one the palm rest is going to come off, so uh, some of the HP laptops of this kind of uh, type, the bottom comes off and the motherboard is stuck to the uh, palm rest. On this one, the palm rest comes up. So using, again, a spudger, please don't use a screwdriver or something that's uh, thin-bladed. So something like that will cause damage along the, uh, the edge of the laptop. So use something that's very broad-sided uh, or a plastic plectrum type thing. So I'm just going to go down along the front of the machine. And then each of the sides. Okay, so now I've unclipped all that, I need to gently try and uh, unclip these ones at the back here as well. Generally I find just wiggling the case a bit helps once you're started. Okay, right, so what unclipped that there was me putting my fingers under, under this bit here and pushing a little bit on the black uh, hinge there. I'll do the same over here. It looks like it kind of deforms the plastic enough to unclip it along there. And there we go, that's the underside of the machine off. So in this computer we have traditional serial ATA hard disk over here. Interestingly it's not a laptop thin one, that one's a fairly chunky hard disk there. Uh, two RAM slots, one of them on this machine has 8 gigs in it so you possibly could put 16 or maybe more in. Um, CPU is here soldered onto the board, so BGA soldered, you can't replace that CPU. Get the cooler here, wireless card here, BIOS battery there, uh, SD card reader and network card are over here. Um, we've got, what else do we have? Keyboard connector, touchpad connector, that's probably the video connector. Power jack, the power jack is a separate thing, so if you manage to smash your power jack you can replace just this uh, item here with a fly lead which goes along to the motherboard. So yeah, not too bad this machine to take to bits and, um, and get to parts. So that's the hard disk. I've already uh, accidentally knocked one of its brackets off while looking at it. So they're not screwed on or anything, they just literally rest on the side of the hard disk. And there's a fly lead which goes to the motherboard. 
and on the end of that is the serial ATA connector there. So I'm just going to unplug that. That's the hard disk removed. Get your new hard disk, plug it into the same place, rest these on the edge, drop this back into place and uh, and off you go, you have a new hard disk in there. Uh, questions I quite, quite often get asked is, well how do you get your windows onto it? Well when you turn it on it just says no operating system. So the options there is you either need a uh, USB to serial ATA adapter, so something a bit like that which will connect your old hard disk, oh sorry, a new hard disk to your old, to the computer. Use a bit of software like Macrium Reflect, which is free for home use, uh, to clone the data from your existing operating system onto the new hard disk. Uh, you may also ne then need to use the Macrium Rescue disk to do a fix on the Windows boot uh, once you put the new hard disk in, but generally that's the easiest way to go about it. Uh, the other option is before you take your hard disk out, uh, Google for Windows 10 ISO and go to the media creation tool on the Microsoft website and that will create you a Windows 10 installation uh, USB stick. The downside to that is when you install Windows on your new hard disk or new SSD, uh, Windows will be factory reset and, and blank and you'll need to still find some way to copy your data off uh, your old hard disk or before you take the old hard disk out you upload it somewhere or um, put it on a different memory stick. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If it has, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have video notifications switched on, but the subscriber numbers really do help. Thank you very much. Okay, the disc is cloned, and now I'm just going to put it back together. There's the SSD. That's now fitting down where the hard disk was, that's all connected, nothing else I need to connect so it's now just uh, putting the cover back on. So hinging it in towards the back, it's going to push in as much as I can to clip that on. All the way around the edge but I will also open it up and clip it around the edge. Okay, ready to screw everything back together.
So we're on to covering these screw holes back up with the little plastic covers. And the two tiny jewelers type screws Now the DVD drive. Battery goes back in and is uh, locked with that switch there. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If it has, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have video notifications switched on, but the subscriber numbers really do help. Thank you very much.